This is episode number 32 of the Fit Traveler video blog. And today we are in session number three of a three week series. And it's, um, we're talking about dining hotspots for business travelers when you're on the road. We already did a session on breakfast, we did a session on lunch. Today's dinner, and we'll be done. Dinner's very different. Um, we'll, I kind of look at breakfast and lunch in a, on a lot of days as just a function of the day. You got to do it. You got to fuel up. It's a part of the day. Um, some people enjoy it. Some people don't, don't. But dinner is really an enjoyable event. It's something that a lot of people look forward to, especially dining out. Uh, dining out is a treat and we all enjoy it. And I don't want to put a damper on that. But for business travelers, dining out can be uh, it can be a little bit grueling at times when you're eating every dinner out throughout the night or three or four times a week. And especially if you try to eat healthy, it gets to be really challenging when it comes to dinner out. Um, so dinner is a different way to plan than breakfast or lunch. You, you heard some of the challenges for breakfast and lunch in the prior episodes. Um, for dinner, it's, there's a lot of different challenges. So I've got five challenges that I want to list um, that are kind of additional challenges that, that you don't get as much with breakfast and lunch for business travelers when you're on the road. So challenge number one is dinner is usually your biggest meal. At least it's my biggest meal. I know a lot of people, it's their biggest meal. And so sometimes you can skimp on breakfast and lunch and kind of power your way through it, muscle through it, got, grab a power bar, grab an apple, whatever it may be, and you can muscle your way through. But a lot of times dinner, you can't do that. You actually need to eat something substantial. So that creates a challenge there. Um, a, another challenge uh, or it's another factor that you have to play into your plan for dinner is that when you're on the road, a lot, a lot of times you go to the hotel before you go out to dinner for whatever reason it might be. You need to check in, you need to clean up, you want to change clothes, what, meet people, whatever it may be. A lot of times you go to the hotel. So maybe you are during the day in downtown where you've got a lot of eating options. You then go to the hotel that might not be in downtown. So it may be in a place where there's only a couple of eating options. In any case, it's another level there to, to factor in. The third one is that for dinner, maybe you're by yourself, maybe you're with colleagues, maybe you're with clients. Those are three very different types of dinners and, and your plans will be affected accordingly. Number four is you may have a say in where you go to eat and you may not. You may be joining colleagues or clients for a reservation that they already made wherever they tell you to go. Or you may be the one planning it. So that's another, another factor. And the fifth factor is, as a business traveler, you may have some dinners in airports or in hotel lobbies. I know this sounds crazy, but there was a, a trip that I was on a couple of months ago where I was in a couple of different airport, uh, airports through connections, and I actually didn't have any time or ability to grab dinner um, as I was running from one plane to the next. And by the time I got to my final destination, I got in the hotel lobby a little after midnight and I was stuck with what they had in their refrigerator that I could then buy and put in a microwave. So that's a factor that you have to consider as well for dinner on the road. So um, taking all those into, uh, into consideration, I want to just kind of give some of my hot spots and maybe some suggestions on depending on the scenario that you have for dinner that night. Um, where I like to go and, and places that I feel feel like you have some uh, healthy options or maybe a new strategy. So first, I'm going to talk about whenever you're traveling, uh, whenever I'm solo, whenever I'm by myself for dinner. My number one rule is that I'm, I want to walk. Um, I do not, after traveling all day, I do not want to get back into an Uber or back into a rental car and drive somewhere for dinner. And it's almost at all costs. I'll almost go, you know, I will usually even eat something I wouldn't normally just so I don't have to go somewhere. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to choose from anywhere that I can walk to within reason. Or in some cases, you're in a hotel out by the airport and there are no restaurants. I'm eating in the hotel lobby. So with that, I'll select the hotel accordingly. I'll go to a hotel that I know has some decent options. Um, I've been pretty happy with the bistro in the courtyards that they came out with a couple of years ago. Um, I, I know I can get an okay dinner there. <laughs> I'm saying that now. I was just in a courtyard this past week, and they changed the menu at the bistro. And the options that I normally like, neither of them were on there. So I was having to play around with some new stuff. I didn't like it as much, but it was still okay. So that's that's really my biggest rule is when I'm eating by myself, 
I'm not getting in a car. I'm going to walk somewhere or eat in the hotel lobby. And you pick and choose. I'm not going to order pizza. So if it comes to that, I'm going to get in a car and go somewhere. Um, but typically, I'll, I'll uh, find a place to walk to. I've been really happy um, over the last probably two years. I've seen the chain Texas Roadhouse really popping up in a lot of hotel areas. So it's amazing how different cities that I go to, I can somehow walk to a Texas Roadhouse. They seem to be just popping up in those strategic locations. And they've got some great healthy options on the menu to go with. So they've been a favorite of mine. The next type of dinner would be a casual dinner with colleagues. So you maybe they're not going to you know eat in the hotel lobby or do the things that you want to do, but you're going to have a casual place to go and, and have good conversation. Um, I've been a huge fan of all the Poke Bowl places that are popping up. If you haven't experienced a Poke Bowl or you don't know what that is, imagine Chipotle. It's that same setup where you're naming stuff that's going on your meal, but with sushi. So you're, you know, the protein is usually going to be the raw fish from, that you would get at sushi. Um, and then you put all the stuff in the bowl. These poke bowls are amazing. Really, really healthy options. If you're not a sushi lover, they've also got some cooked stuff in there, some shrimp and some other things like that. So don't shy away, even if you're not a sushi lover. Uh, the poke bowl places are going crazy. I, the only chain that I've seen that has kind of popped up, I've seen it in different cities. I think it's called Ahi Poke. It really seems like every city I go to, I'll see two or three pokey places, but none of them have the same name. So I don't even know a really good chain to recommend. Um, but check out a pokey bowl next time you're having a casual meal with colleagues. Now, if you are doing a, a dinner that's going to kind of be a meeting um, with colleagues or even clients, and you're not going to a fancy steakhouse, but you just want to have a nice, enjoyable environment with a good meal to where you can have good conversation, um, one of my go-tos is P.F. Chang's. You heard me about lunch talking about Payway. There's unhealthy options that you can get mixed up in, of course, easily at Payway and P.F. Chang's. But both of those places have really healthy options as well. If, you, if you're disciplined and you're smart and you know how to order, those are some great places. And P.F. Chang's gives you that environment that's nice enough to have colleagues and clients and in a business meeting over dinner, um, but not that level of the fancy steakhouse. So that goes to that last category, which is that formal dinner, the really nice steakhouse. You see them next to every convention center. And if you're a business traveler, you probably are at one of these places uh, a few times a month. And that's a huge perk and it's a huge joy, but it can really get you disconnected from your healthy eating habits. You have to be very, very careful about these dinners. I love these places. I mean, how, how can you not love these places? But I dread going because um, it's really, really hard and takes a lot of willpower. There are healthy things on those menus. Uh, just picture all of the menu looks the same. There's going to be steak and seafood and all the fancy stuff that comes along with it. There's going to be some great healthy options on there. A filet is always a good option. A piece of fish is normally a good option. You may want to talk to them about how they cook it and you know not drown it in butter and not put all the sauces on it and all of that. So you may have to do some adjustments there. You have to be smart with the uh, sides. You know they're all going to have asparagus. That's a good one, uh, uh, a good option. Stay away from the mashed potatoes and the lobster mac and cheese or whatever all these places have. Um, the biggest problem and the biggest challenge of these places is you get to dinner, you're probably hungry because it's dinner time, and these places take a long time. You're going to be sitting there a long time, and it's going to be 45 minutes before you actually get a plate of food. And during that time, there's going to be bread out and you're really hungry. And that's the biggest challenge. And that's why I dread going is because I know that bread's going to be sitting there. And not, not to mention that when I'm done with dinner, you're going to be sitting there for another 45 minutes and, you know, then the desserts and all that come out. So um, the, the strategy there is eat before you go a snack. Grab something that can tie you over for an hour to hour and a half. That's not going to make you ravenous when you get there because then you're just going to destroy the bread and, uh, and you're going to put yourself in a bad spot. So I don't have any chain suggestions. All those formal places, those steakhouses, you're going to love them all. Just be smart. Eat a snack before you go and then order smart and you'll still really be able to enjoy it. So you know, don't take the fun out of dinner. It, it is a treat. It is fun. Enjoy it. Enjoy the company, but be smart about it because for business travelers, you're eating these dinners out all of the time and you can really, that can be what sets you over and takes you from a healthy lifestyle that you like into, oh my gosh, look what has happened to me over the last 
year of this business travel. That dinner is so crucial. So be smart about it. Um, and I would love to hear your suggestions, your tips, your favorite spots. I'll share them with our community. Please continue to follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Fit1440. We love sharing with you guys. We love engaging. And we look forward to seeing you again soon.